Welcome, addicts. We are going to be having a little bit of a debate with ourselves, I guess, uh, going over the fantasy prospect of the two head running backs in the San Francisco backfield of Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman. But before we get started, if you guys are looking for more analysis like this, we're breaking down every fantasy relevant player uh, going individually one by one. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. And also check out our website at fantasyaddictionnetwork.com for a full list of rankings. But let's get into the debate. So overall, in terms of what we can expect from these two guys, it there's a huge range of opinions on this right now. And I, I recognize we're probably going to be wrong, at least in some regards. But it appears right now that Raheem Mostert is basically being nominated as the king and Tevin Coleman is the... He's just dirt. People don't care about him at all. And while I, I will show you some stats that actually support why, that's logical. I don't know that logic is a thing that we necessarily want to apply when it comes to Kyle Shanahan's backfield. And that's not to say that Kyle Shanahan isn't a good coach. He just prefers to run a system where there's multiple backs involved. Matt Burita was traded away. We recognize that, but there, Jeff Wilson is still there and Jarek McKinnon is coming back. They, you have to remember Jarek McKinnon was actually paid a lot of money to come to the 49ers a few years ago and just has had you know, two seasons where you have been robbed from injury and not that I expect uh, Jarek McKinnon to end up stealing this backfield by any means, but the way that this team runs, they don't need one singular guy every single week. It's, it's like an evolution of what we've seen from teams like Bill Belichick, where the scheme and the particular game script of what is expected for the game plan that week based on the opponent is typically what dictates who's going to end up getting more of the carries. And a lot of people are like, well, Reem Hostert took over and he had the majority of the carries for the end of the year. And Tevin Coleman was there, but they're forgetting that Tevin Coleman suffered a high ankle sprain last year, which very, very, very common for a high ankle sprain to really rob a player of their efficiency, especially when they come back early. Tevin Coleman only missed two games with a high ankle sprain, which is a bit insane when you think about it. He also had that shoulder injury into the playoffs. We saw how ineffective even Saquon Barkley was coming back from a high ankle sprain, so it's not surprising that Tevin Coleman was so inefficient with his touches last year. It's not like Raheem Moster has been a picture of health either. Uh, missed plenty of games in his career last year was his first year I believe that he was able to play in all 16 games so when you look at all the considerations while we recognize that Raheem Mostert was more efficient that Tevin Coleman definitely started to cede a role towards the end you look at the playoffs the game against the Vikings Tevin Coleman had the majority of the work had over 105 rushing yards and then against the Packers in the NFC Championship game he started and got hurt right away and that's when Raheem Mostert came on and torched Green Bay so at that point we don't know that Tevin Coleman wouldn't have done or been asked to do the same thing had he not gotten hurt early on in the game. We'll get back to this debate as we go on, but I just wanted to set the tone for where I'm getting at in terms of we're going to probably recommend taking the better value here. So last year, Raheem Moster plays all 16 games, ends up with 772 rushing yards, 14 receptions, 180 receiving yards, and 10 total touchdowns. Now that 10 touchdowns is pretty important when you consider that Tevin Coleman only missed two games, also had Matt Breida there, so that could go up. I definitely could see that going up. Raheem Mostert was a touchdown machine towards the end of the season. Finished with the 32nd most fantasy points of the running back spot and was 38th in fantasy points per game. But he has a lot of early on weeks where he wasn't being used much. That's bringing the average down. So that's a little bit skewed. We'll get more into that in a second. Tevin Coleman finishing with 544 yards. Same receiving yards, but seven more receptions, seven total touchdowns. Finishing 39th in total fantasy points and... Uh, you know, basically half a point less per game than Raheem Mostert on average. So when we look at the individual game logs for Raheem Mostert, with the exception of week two against Cincinnati, where he was incredibly productive uh, in both the running and the receiving game, that was his highest receiving total in the entire season. He basically went into the nether, nether world for a while, multiple, you know, seven out of eight games where he finished under a, a running back three, hitting those red weeks over and over and over again. And then against Green Bay, he finally starts to see a little bit of light. And then he had post two blue weeks in a row against Baltimore and New Orleans. 
a little bit more down against Atlanta and the Rams and then finishes the, the year against Seattle. So I think a lot of people are remembering the Baltimore New Orleans games and again obviously the playoff game with against the Packers where he completely torts the world and lit lit the Packers on fire. So those really big performances I feel are kind of skewing the fantasy community into thinking what we can expect from him for the entire season. When you look at the whole picture, even within that time, having you know two games where he didn't perform that well against the Falcons or the Rams, barely having over ten uh, points per game, not involved in the passing game very much, with the exception of Cincinnati. Never had a game where he had more than three receptions. I'm sorry, three targets. Never had a game where he had more than three receptions. That only happened once. Plenty of games where he didn't have any targets at all. So, running backs that you're taking later on in the draft, if you're shooting for upside, yes, Raheem Moser gives you touchdown upside. But if we're talking in a PPR league, if he's not that heavily involved in the passing game, and we're already worried about him basically getting game scripted out, not being involved in the passing game is really going to hurt his weekly upside. And you could expect, even if he has a, you know, better season by far this next year there's still going to be in a good number of games where he doesn't even register as someone that you should have even considered throwing in your starting lineup when you look back at the box score and we look at uh, tevin coleman as well you know a lot of his stats came from that one big game against carolina where he had four touchdowns that was his only blue week and he had a few other running back two weeks in week five and six week 10 and 12 and then basically like an inverse story so tevin coleman guy uh was a guy near the beginning of the year and then flipped around to more raheem Mostert as the season went on but again being able to do what he did with uh dealing with the high ankle sprain that when you're playing on it, it doesn't really heal as the season goes on. So that, again, speaks more to the inefficiency. You can see some of his rushing averages, with the exception of the game against Carolina, were terrible. Only one or a couple games above four, but for the most part, you know, three and below. A couple games at like 1.9, 1.2 against Arizona. Just terrible uh, efficiency metrics there. So we're talking a lot of metrics. Let's actually look at some of those. And first thing to remember, as we mentioned in our Jimmy Garoppolo video, the 49ers pass to run ratio of 51 to 49. This is the team that runs the ball the second most of any team in the NFL and wouldn't expect for that to change too much. Now, when we look at Mostert's efficiency, he had a true yards per carry of 5.3, which was number one in the NFL, and that's taking out his breakaway runs. But when you consider that he was also number one in breakaway run run rate of 8.8%, that's insanely efficient. And yes, you have to give credit to the system that provided the opportunity for him to be able to do that, but he took advantage of it and did really well with the touches that he was given. Also created 1.89 yards per touch, which was number 12 at the running back spot. Whereas Tevin Coleman was basically the polar opposite in all of these areas. Only 3.7 true yards per carry, which is 52nd, 4.4% breakaway run rate, and only 1.2 yards created per touch, which was 57th. So the tail of efficiency between Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman was massive. The question then becomes how much of this had to do with the high ankle sprain that Tevin Coleman was dealing with. I think Raheem Mostert will probably continue seeing more of the touches just because of how efficient he was last year. But we see guys like this every year as well, that they perform really well for one season. Everyone gets super hyped up on them. And then the next year they completely flatline. Think of guys like Justin Forsett and Alex Collins that perform really well for a half of a season. You're like, oh my gosh, they're finally here. We've been waiting for their breakout forever. And then the next season, they completely tank. It's not like Raheem Mostert is that young either. Uh, heading into uh, 2020, he's actually going to be 28. So considering that, it's really hard for me to endorse this kind of efficiency to continue, even in a really good run system like the 49ers. Uh, I do have to at least mention for those of you that are still on board the Mostert train. From weeks 12 to 17, Mostert was the running back eight, averaging 17.4 points per game. And then you consider what he did in the playoffs against the Packers was really huge. But again, I have to remind you that he did nothing against the Vikings. That was a Tevin Coleman game. So even if Mostert remains this efficient, if Tevin Coleman can get back to at least a modest level of efficiency behind this really good offensive line that uh, 
pretty much is the same losing Joe Staley, but then adding Trent Williams, it's hard to really imagine that their offensive line is going to take a massive step back. Uh, You have the best play caller in the NFL at being able to create space for your running backs and your receivers. So Raheem Mostert is going to have some really good games, but Tevin Coleman is going to be heavily involved. And I also think Jarek McKinnon is going to be involved as well. So right now you see a massive ADP gap between Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman. And honestly, I'm just not buying into Raheem Mostert at his price tag right now, unless he drops to like the seventh or eighth round. Uh, That would probably be the only time I'd really consider taking him. But right now you can get Tevin Coleman incredibly late. So what where that leaves us in terms of trying to project this out for a full year, we have Mostert, you know, increasing his total yards to 960, 20 receptions, 175 receiving yards, and 10 total touchdowns. Now I know the touchdown total could be closer to 14, 15 if things go right for him. But again, we're trying to project modestly here and knowing what we know about Kyle Shanahan, we just don't expect Raheem Mostert to see a majority of the carries. And even if it is a majority, it would be a very slim one. Uh, Looking at what that would lead for Tevin Coleman, 607 rushing yards, a little bit more involvement in the past game with 27 receptions and seven total touchdowns would put him at a pretty similar year to where he was last year. But again, we're kind of expecting a little more efficiency. So that could even go up, but that would most likely be a direct correlation down words for Raheem Mostert. So we have both of their upside rankings at three out of five. Uh, Basically because if either of these guys go down and Jarek McKinnon is completely washed, if this team is ever forced to have to use a single back as like the majority workload, they're going to be the most effective and important running back to own in the entire NFL. But considering how deep it is with Jeff Wilson and Derek McKinnon also there and knowing Kyle Shanahan would probably trade for another running back if Moster or Coleman were to go down early on in the season, it's hard to imagine them ever getting to a place where they're, they are giving a workload uh, to one particular running back every single week. So that's limiting their, their total upside. And what you really want drafting guys around where you're getting Raheem Mostert is you want guys that can vastly outperform where they're going. I think, Raheem Moser has a chance to modestly outperform where he is, but I don't see him finishing the season as a running back one. So we can't give him a much higher upside ranking than that. And then Tevin Coleman could end up being the guy. So considering that he would still have the same warts and problems that you'd be expecting from Raheem Mostert, where half the season, you're not happy that you started him, but he at least gives you that upside. And the fact that you can get him multiple rounds later than Raheem Mostert, if you're going to take a stab at a running back here, my vote would be to take a stab at Tevin Coleman because you can at least build out the rest of your roster and then if neither of them hit you don't feel too bad so anyway that is my in-depth debate and analysis over Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this one breaking down all the fantasy relevant players in the NFL for 2020 also check out our website fantasyaddictionnetwork.com for a full list of rankings and we will see you guys in the next video